So it turns out that there are a few other data structures that are part of, of the C++ standard library that, again, are not strictly part of STL, but they're interesting, and I'm going to talk about them very briefly just for completeness. One of them is something that's called a bit set, and this allows you to treat a set of bits as a data structure to perform operations on. And of course, because it's implemented, implemented internally as a bit set, it'll be very small and compact. And uh, there's a bunch of operations. It's basically a whole bunch of funny characters in, in C++ or C, and we define them in terms of their bitwise operations. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this example and then look at it. There we go. So we're going to start out by making ourselves a bit set with 16 bits in it. And we're going to give the initial value, the value of 32, except what 32 is when you're dealing with a bit set is this representation. So you can see that we have 16 bits. And when we set it to 32, 32, if you think about what 32 in binary is, it's basically 10000. All right, 10000. Yeah five zeros. So that's the, uh, that's the way that the bit set will work, and we're going to give it that initial value. Then we're going to go ahead and make some changes by using the subscript operator on the bit set. So we're going to set bit zero to true. So as you can see, that changes zero to one. We're going to change bit five to false, so it's no longer one. And then we're going to set bits 10 and 12 to true. And if you take a look at the, the second line down here, you can see in the output, that's what it gets set to. Then we go ahead and print the contents of all this stuff out. Then we go ahead and we rotate the bits. We shift them, uh, we rotate them over two. So if you take a look at the third line here, you can see that what was in the, the, one lo the first location is now shifted over to the third location and everything's kind of shifted down by two. We print that, then we go ahead and we flip the bits. So if you take a look at the fourth line of the output, Everything that was a zero has now become a one. That's kind of cool. And then we check, we say, hey, are any bits set in this set? And the answer, of course, is yes. So there's at least one bit set. And then we count the number of bits that are set, which are 13 in this case. And then we do some more indexing to see whether or not a bit is enabled or not. And you can either use the subscript operation or you can use the test method. They both do the same thing. And then the last thing we do is we add 11 to bit zero. So the contents of bit zero are one. So one plus 11 equals 12. <laughs> and so this is just showing us some fun examples of, of operations on, on bit sets. Uh, I don't actually use bit set much, if ever, for the code I write. I don't do a lot of code at this level, but it's kind of a fun example. And it's, it's a good example of how you can use uh, STL in, in other ways besides just for the classic containers. We're now going to talk about another non-STL class that has some characteristics of STL that's called ValArray. And ValArray is a very interesting class that provides essentially sequential SIMD operations, where SIMD stands for single instruction, multiple data. And so what you basically do here is you have a whole bunch of methods that will work on all the contents of a ValArray in one fell swoop. So methods like shift and add and so on. So I'll let you read the comments here. They explain lots of stuff about Valerie, but let's look at an example. I think an example will make its purpose very clear. All right, so here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make ourselves a, a Valerie of 10 elements, and we're gonna store the values zero through nine into the Valerie. So we start out by using the subscript operator to store each value. So now we have a Valerie that we can work on in one fell swoop. And then we go ahead and we, we print the results here. The next thing, oh, and by the way, there's no, there's no iterator defined on Valarray. So we have to use this index-like operation here, the, the index-based for loop. That is in contrast, of course, to uh, other types like string that we've talked about. You can tell that Valarray came along very early in the C++ standard library timeframe before the concept of SDL had been really thought through. We then go ahead down here and we, shift everything by three. So you can see by shifting it, it rotates it. So before we had zero at the beginning and now that's been shifted over by three. So zero is three items in from the right-hand side as opposed to being on the left-hand side. So we shift the whole thing and everything moves over. 
then we can go ahead and get a new val array of Boolean that will have true or one for every element that's less than five. So if you take a look here, you can see three and four, zero, one, and two are all less than five. So the third line in the output is one, one, zero, 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 one, one, one. So everything that was less than five is one, everything that was greater than five is zero. So that's for true and false. We then go ahead and make ourselves a value array of doubles of elements five and give it the values zero through four. And then we go ahead and compute the square root of all these things. So you can see that this is going to be the square roots of all those elements. So you can apply an operation. This is why it's like a sequential SIMD operation, single instruction, multiple data, one operation square root applied to all the data. And then you can also add the elements together so you can double them. So when you add two val arrays, it creates a new val array that adds each element. So we've doubled the square roots. And then we can go ahead and subtract a value, in this case, 10 from every element. And then when we print that out, that'll have affected every element in the val array.